What is up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to another day here of the GSL. Uh, today we've got Group D. Uh, every once in a while we'll call Group D the Group of Death. Today it really is the Group of Death. Yeah, this is going to be a scary one. Yeah. Solar, Cure, Young, and Hero. Probably the most stacked group that we're going to have this season in the round of 16. Yeah, I, I got to say. say so. Uh, it should be a pretty long group as well. Uh, I think it's a tough one to say who exactly is going to get out, although I think Ryung, it's fair to say, is probably the weakest of these players. He does occasionally surprise us, but, of course, uh, Solar just coming off a GSL victory, uh, I think he's probably an easy player to pick to get out. Yeah, Solar probably my favorite to get out, either in first or second. And then we have Cure and Hero. Hero kind of been an online warrior recently. I mean, he's killing pretty much everybody in these online cups. And then yeah. you go to offline, and the results aren't really what you expect from a player of his caliber. It's, it's weird because there's been times where, where Hero looks like the quintessential Protoss god. Like, he looks yeah. so on top of it. Um, but lately, he has not looked as strong. Um, there was a period where it seemed like he was just going to be the de facto best Protoss and everybody would be copying his play style. Um, he did bring a lot of interesting ideas and approaches uh, in the past couple of years. But I want to see what kind of hero we're going to have here today because he could it could be a real blowout performance. Maybe he gets out first or he could flounder and then that's going to be very easy for Cure to move on. Yeah, if it's the hero that we see in a lot of these online cups with the killer instinct that just goes for the, the one timing that he sees, it's like he can like, see through all the different permutations of where the game can go and he's like, this is the timing, this is my window, this is where I kill him. That's where Hero thrives. Right. And I feel like a lot of these offline events, he's not finding that window. And Hero, I mean, I love him. I think he's one of the best Protoss players in the world. He's certainly the best in Korea. I don't look at him for a really clean builds or clean macro. It's more about control. It's about timings. It's about aggression. Yeah. But this is a tough group to bring that kind of aggression into. I mean, Kira's rock solid in TVP. He's Solar. really brought the very best of himself the last couple of years. He's really stepped it up. He's looking really good. Yeah, Solar, as you said, fresh off a GSL trophy, reigning right. champ coming in. It's going to be an interesting one. And Rung, as you said, is absolutely the underdog coming in today. Guys, uh, if you do want to buy a ticket to our show, we had a link up on screen just a, a second ago. Um, you can buy the tickets in advance. Uh, I think they go live 5.30 every Friday. So it's the day after this uh, uh, show happens. Uh, but we usually don't have the whole studio completely fill up. So, um, But as we get later and later on in the tournament, definitely do uh, get in there and uh, get a ticket because we do have people that come and visit and then can't get in because the fire department won't let us fill it up with too many people. Yeah, they're literally across yeah. the street. Yeah, they're literally <laughs> across the street. So um, They come yeah. knocking. They're like, how many gamers you got in that studio? <laughs> That's <tasteless>? right. <laughs> um, we are uh, using a, a crowd-funded uh, system right now. If you want to support us, the information's on screen over here. Um, and I got to say, man, it's great to have GSL back uh, in the studio here with yeah. the fans coming down. It's so cool. It's such a special experience to have the, the fans, the casters, the players all over here. Wow. You can see where we're at so far here. Yeah, already this season. Very cool. Almost $52,000 already in, is it March? We're three months into the year? That is... That is crazy. Thank you guys so much for supporting with the Star Balloons, with the donations on Patreon as well. Yeah. Goes directly into the prize pool. Get some cool perks such as replay packs and behind the scenes videos too. And as it looks right now, this is how the round of eight is shaping up. Maru, Classic, and Byun Group A. Stats, Shin, and Gumiho in Group B. We're going to know the first and second place from Group D. Who's going to join them? As uh, I feel like we usually don't get this sneak peek of the round of eight. Usually it's like the day after we clean up the round of 16. Right. GSL will publish online what the groups are going to be, so it's cool to actually get this glimpse into what the round of eight is going to be. Yeah, we're, we're seeing the bones form of those groups, and, and we'll have that uh, conclusion drawn here by the end of the evening. Yeah, three Terran, two Protoss, one Zerg. A little bit of a surprising layout right here. I mean, Nightmare and Creator, I kind of expected one of them to advance in Group C. In Group B, Stats and Classic both advancing over Dark and Bunny, of all people. So surprising. <laughs> <笑>あ、違う。ウェブロワネメン、タクサラマポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポンポ
아니 진욕을 피하기 피하고... 위해서 피해준 거예요 전동원이 기분이 확 풀렸는데 내가 가... 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 응. 연습 도와주면 되지 용호 형은 못 이겨요 하지만 강진동원 동민수는 풀을만 하다 아니, 내 마음에 들어갔다 나왔어? 아니 그럼요 아... 뭐 같은 팀이거나 이런 건잘안 뽑긴 하잖아요 근데 민수가 저를 안 뽑을 거라는 생각을 저는 안 해봤어요 한 번도 <웃음> <웃음> 그 예상과 맞아서 그냥 그거에 좀 당황했을 뿐이고 저거전을 하고 싶긴 했어요 극복을 하고 싶어서 그러면 또 하면 누구랑 하나 민수랑 하면은 비벼볼 만 되겠다 생각을 마음속으로 하고 있었습니다 또 민수가 제 마음을 알아서 뽑아줘도 고마울 따름입니다 뭐 저랑 하고 싶으신 이런 거 하면 제가 감당이 안 될까봐 일단 하지 않겠고요. <웃음> 일단 뽑을 사람 먼저 생각을 해놔가지고 저는 김도욱 선수 제명하겠습니다. 오? 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 네, 네. 네. 아니 누구 뽑아야지 오가 안 나오는데 다시 할게요. 같은 팀이 아닌데? 어 살짝 좀 생각하고 있었거든요. 오늘 30분 30분 게임 해가지고 져가지고 혹시 뽑을 수도 있지 않나 이 생각하고 있었는데 동원이 형도 태태전 잘 하시니까 좀 재밌는 게임 할수 있을 것 같아요 아 그거 그거 한판 이겼다고 해가지고 뽑으면 안 되는 거야 <웃음> 말을 또 이상하게 하시네 저 친구 <웃음> 이대형으로 졌어도 뭐 뽑을 거였고 민수가 동인한테 자주 지는 거 많이 봤거든요 그래가지고 뭐두 마리 토끼 다 잡아보자 민수가 좋아하는 좀 만들 수 있지 않을까 그리고 제일 센 사람이 온다고 하니까 여기까지 기대해보도록 하겠습니다 작은 팀이 맞죠? 아 같은 옷을 입고 있는 거 같아요 준호 형안 뽑고 짝을 뽑겠습니다 짝을 뽑겠습니다 어 일단은 제가 요 근래 대회에서 똥을 많이 쌌는데도 제 위치를 이렇게까지 생각해 주셔서 좀 감사하기도 하고 근데 이렇게 돼서 뭐 다행인 것 같습니다 동민수 선수 지금 이거에 대해서 어떻게 생각하세요? 나 굉장히 마음에 들지 않고요 저는 뭐 설렁설렁해서 설렁설렁 올라가겠습니다 그냥 열받게 난 동원이 형 원래 좋아하는 형이었는데 좀 오늘은 좀 너무 믿고 이 조가 만들어진 건 민수가 저를 뽑으면서 시작됐기 때문에 지금 머릿속에 뭔가 지조 그립이 좀 그려졌는데 그러지 않길 바라고요 네, 재밌게 좋은 경기 했으면 좋겠습니다 Right, so Solar and Young both on Team Vitality. Solar picks Young first so in the group funny. selection, which <laughs> was like a big faux pas in StarCraft II esports for a very long time. Is in the group selection, you do not pick your teammate. Yeah, in yeah. Korea, this is just something that you do not do. Yeah, you want to you want to train together and then you send each other off into your different groups and, and yeah. hope that you're forced to meet later on. Solar. <laughs> Solar does not abide by that. I he's love, like, I love I, he's like, I'm saving Ryung from dark. That's what I'm doing here. But really, you just know that like yeah. Solar, Solar is probably just dominating Ryung yeah. in the practice match. He's, he's like, you know what? what? Crazy win rate first hit. He's like, okay, well now I, I'll just pick you. Well, he's gonna have to prove it right now though. Ryung versus Solar are gonna be the first match today. Teammate duking it out in kind of an unexpected group selection. Really, I, I didn't. I didn't think that was the way it was going to go in terms of the drafting. Yeah. <laughs> I know they publish these videos like before we go live, but I like to watch it here in the studio, get it nice and fresh. I'm just kind of taken aback that <laughs> this was the way the group broke down. My goodness. This should be an easy one here for Solar. I mean, he's really become such a powerhouse player. Very tough to kill. Um, and, you know, this is a player that was really overshadowed um, not just by Zergs internationally, but by Zergs domestically for a long time. And he's really kind of come into his own. Very cool to see. Ryung is, um, he's obviously always been good enough to qualify for GSL. He doesn't always make it. He tends to just not get deep. He seems to be, I guess what you said, like a tier three Korean pro or something. Like, he'll be, it's kind of along the lines of Nightmare yeah. and some of these other players where, um, you know, every season, of course, is an opportunity for him to, you know, make us reevaluate that but mm -hmm. i think this is going to be a tough group for him if he gets out it's going to be a big upset and a big surprise to me personally yeah i do feel that he's right up there with nightmare as one of those players that consistently is qualifying for gsl but usually falls out either round of 12 round of 16 either gets third or fourth place in his group and here in group d he's gonna have to run the gauntlet in mind it is solar cure and hero that ryung has to go up against if he wants to get out of this group 
Group of Death here as we're getting ready to go into game number one between Solar and Yurong kicking off Group D match one on hard lead. Let's get started. Okay, we've got Solar here in the top left. In the bottom right is Ryung. And it looks like Ryung's gonna be going for a wall in over here at his natural expand. Yeah, look at that. I haven't seen that too much so far this season, I think. Yeah, not as popular. Uh, we were talking earlier about the fact that these two guys are practice partners. So mm -hmm. um, it's always especially weird if you're gonna compete against somebody that you've trained with a whole lot because you know all each other's secrets. Um, your kind of views on the game in general. Uh, so sometimes games like this can be especially uh, confusing to spectate or cast because there might be weird mind games that we just don't know about. Absolutely. That they're going to do. This opener appears to uh, be the build order that Beyond popularized here, which is going to be at least three Reapers. We've seen some people experiment with a little bit more. Um, but basically a Reaper pressure build, you might be able to control the uh, timing or even placement of the third base, or even get a denial if you're really good. Yeah, it depends, I think, on how much Ryung wants to commit to the Reapers. Generally speaking, we do see if there's five Reapers, that third hatch for getting delayed significantly here. And it's, it's a good point you made about these guys being practice partners, being teammates coming in here and having it be a bit tricky to spectate. I feel like Hero and Dark are another two player that combo that I feel like every single online cup that I watch in Korea, whether it's, you know, like the Korea StarCraft League, for example, which is a crowdfunded League that happens on a weekly basis or maybe bi-weekly now out here in Korea. They're meeting in pretty much every single finals. And so they change their builds up a lot. And Ryung doing this two racks build on the low ground here, this might not be something that he does typically in practice. This might be something that he's experimenting with a little bit here, trying to throw Solar off his game. Because if you're coming into this situation where you know, Solar did pick Ryung, I'm sure they practice together. I'm sure that means that Solar has a very good win rate against Ryung in those practice games. If you're young, you kind of have to think out of the box on how you're going to throw your opponent off, who knows you so well, and find a way to get advantage. So we got the Reaper coming in here now. He didn't check up at the um, the screen just to the right of this shot over here. That's where the third base is, is in here. But I guess until that queens out, he wants to just see if he can get a little bit more damage. But in some of these games, I see them always go for the hatchery right away. You could basically use the grenades to zone off the queen. So a little bit of a different approach. He's going to come up here now. Did he actually see that? He might have pulled away too quickly. Yeah, I think he didn't. You no, know, he didn't get the check. I think he might be trying to go so fast that he actually made a mistake there. That's yeah, possible. Oh, this Reaper actually going to come into the main. Eventually he is able to wiggle around those lings. Only five of them here on the field. And both queens actually in the natural expansion. So it's some nice micro young, able to find some more damage. There are two command centers behind this, by the way. Yeah. So, oh, oh my oh god, my with goodness. two eBays. That's about as greedy it's as it good. gets. It's, yeah, I'm going to go for three Reapers, and then I'll see you in late game, friend. Mm. Yeah, I think this might be why Ryung wasn't really checking the third base too much, because with three Reapers, you don't really have the DPS to actually threaten to cancel or force a cancel. And he wants to instead save that gas to go really fast double upgrade back at home. And this is... It really is about as greedy as it can possibly get here. Yeah, well, I kind of like builds like this. Like, this looks like it'd be a fun build to try to run. Oh, yeah. Because if, now, I mean, if you were to get cheesed or they were to make, like, a Nidus Worm or something like that, you're dead a thousand times over. But we were kind of talking about this at the start of the game, that because they're training partners, maybe there's, it's going to be an odd-looking game. I bet this is not a normal build that Ryung is running. I bet this is the greediest build. I mean, it already is looking like the greediest build we could ever cast, right, yeah. for the matchup. But <laughs> I can't even think of a game that I've casted where I've seen this. Triple Reaper into uh, Triple Command Center into Double eBay. I mean, the Double eBay was even before the factory. This is going to be an insane yeah. timing. And I, I wonder if this could eventually line up into a really terrifying 2-2 push coming out from Young. Because up until that window with 2-2, all these resource invested in the engineering base and the faster command center, it's not really going to get any payoff up until that point. That's kind of the breaking point where suddenly this, all this investment is starting to come to fruition. You have this really massive army and actually moving out here with a couple of 
Marines as well. I love what we're seeing out of Ryong. This kind of reminds me of uh, you know how Protoss players used to shark a little bit back in the early days of Wings of Liberty and Heart of sure. the Storm. You remember this term that every caster used for like five or six years, yeah, but it fell just off. Sharking around. You yeah. shark around. You force the, the 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 Zerg opponent to make a round of drones, then you pull right back off. And anything that Ryong can do right now to make Solar not make drones is good for him oh, because. Yeah. He really wants to hit the most crisp timing possible, I think, with this build. I actually have a lot of hopes here for Ryung in this game because, um, you know, he's got he's about to have 1-1 one, one done here. 2-2 two, two is going to start. I imagine we're not going to see any action until 2-2 two, two is done. This build is so greedy um, that there's no way you could even take advantage of the 1-1 one, one upgrades right now. You don't yeah. have enough pieces on the board, so to speak, to even try to take a fight. Um, but yeah, 2-2 two, two, and 3-3 three, three are going to be just massive when that uh, timing finally comes. These three Reapers are still alive. So Solar, if he was paying attention, if he clicked on one of these Reapers, would see that 1-1 one, one is complete and should have a very good idea of what Ryung's build is, especially mm -hmm. seeing that third command center go down. And so Solar, Solar immediately going to start Roach Speed, another big round of drones. Surprised you don't see a fourth hatchery for him just yet. Only now throwing that down. And he's going to be basically a full upgrade behind for the majority of this game. Yeah, until unless you can basically wait out the 3-3 three, three upgrades. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're going to be in a bad spot. Um, we're getting closer and closer to that 2-2, two, two, so we're going to start to see some movement here on the map uh, as pressure tries to build. The fourth base is a lot of times where um, it's decided whether – sorry, fourth base for the Zerg is usually mm -hmm. where it's decided, is this going to go on into a long game or not? Like, basically, can the Terran smash that or not? Uh, and this game is probably going to be no exception to that. So Overlord and Creek Timber here in the main base. Well positioned. Immediately spotting the drop. And Solar is able to parry that away for now. But Ryung, up until that 2-2 two -two is done, isn't really looking to get too much damage. He just want to keep, wants to keep Solar on the back foot, on his toes a little bit. If he's quick with the stim here, might even be able to pick up a couple of queens. Yeah, he identifies that. Immediately comes in. Solar not even going for the transfuse. He is going to transfuse that second queen. But this is nice by Ryung, only losing, what, one Marine, maybe two? Getting some nice damage, can get some Overlords as well. Usually not too impactful, but when your opponent's playing Roaches the same way that Solar is, they are very supply intensive, so... They are. They're also not that fast, so I mean, yeah. you can basically play keep away here with these Medivacs. I thought he was going to fly that back into the <laughs> Rosa Bile for a second. Um, but again, this is not the master plan to just drop over there. He wants to start pushing, and that should be happening pretty soon here. He's actually throwing down in the fourth command center. So I think this is oh. just going to be 2-2 two, two multi prong harassment coming out from yeah. Ryong while he continues to macro back at home. He's even throwing down two more bunkers. He's starting siege tank production. So, so. I guess, yeah, if he's going to take a fourth base, which I'm glad you pointed that. I actually missed that command center over there. Then this is really going to come down to 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. That's... And can he close the game out with there? Now, that <laughs> kind of crazy, that actually. That almost doesn't seem right, but... Let's see how this pans out. All right, so Solar getting his Hive Tech almost completed now, only just now starting plus one melee attack. Those Marines are going to have plus two, almost plus three infantry armor by the time the plus one is done, which is insane here for Ryung if Solar really wants to move into a lean composition. It makes me think that he's really going to have to rely on something like Spellcasters, which makes sense given he's got 12,000, 12, 12, 1,200 gas in the bank right now. And maybe pairing those up with you know, files with fungals, with a healthy number of banelings and vipers. Could be what we see here from Solar, because just pure ling, as soon as these 2-2 upgrades are done, which they are now, isn't really going to cut it, especially if there's a good number of bio on the ground. I mean, even with a full surround, just the fact that the Marines have two armor to your zero attack upgrades on those lings, like, they just tickle, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if he's going to be able to get much more done here with the drops and the attacks everywhere. Mm. You know, it's... Um, it's at the point where Zerg is now maxed out. God, this is such a weird game tempo-wise. It really right? is. Even Solar isn't going on that high of a drone count. He might have even been anticipating the same 2-2 push that we were thinking might be in the cards here yeah. for Young because he's only sitting at 80. Occasionally for Zergs, you will see them play a little bit more aggressively and even go up to some, like 90 drones, and they just trade out the army supply over and over again. But instead, Solar just spending a lot of that army or a lot of that supply on pure army and upgrades. And so his economy not as strong as, you know, a player like Serral's might be at this point, but the trade-off is his standing army is very potent. And that means that Ryung actually can't get too much done with this multi-prong harass. And Solar for now is still trying to play cleanup. He's trying to catch all these harassments that are coming on. Actually, a really nice pick out there for Ryung. Gonna be able to get a good number of queens. Queen count going all the way down to five here for Solar. He's gonna lose another one there. 
actually going down all the way to three. There's very few injects here for Solar. Those Marines absolutely melting those lings and now going up into the main base. Ooh. Solar might be in trouble here, Tasteless. Oh, yeah, this actually oh, could be pretty come bad. Come on, what are you doing? Oh, two stack no! together. Oh, oh, it's a disaster. Oh, my God, a cataclysmic moment in that game. Uh, but it's not done yet. This drop over here on the top right is still doing a lot of damage, taking out quite a bit of drones. There should be five medevacs and like 10 more yeah. Marines in the main. Well, now these Marines are just stuck here. That's their home now, or was their home. Oh, now they're wiped God. down easily. It felt like that was the moment before those medevacs all com completely got denied. That felt like that was the moment where maybe Ryung is going to be able to start to actually take this game. Uh, Ultra was shot down there, beautifully done with those Marines. It's rare that you see Marines shooting down Ultra. I by know, the right? Way. There's only there is plus two armor, but no Ultra armor upgrade just yet. It's only just now finishing, but. I mean, that feels a little bit like a whiff there for Young. If he kept those medevacs alive, if he split them from the parasitic bomb, I, I really think he could have gotten a little bit more done in the main base. As it is right now, Solar with a bit of a lucky break, able to equalize, and they're going to come in once again, takes down an extractor here on the right side. And yeah, just take what you can get, right? Yeah. And he, he's doing a good job of rotating his composition. It was almost pure Marine before, and now he's getting a good number of Marauders mixed in. Ghosts are coming in as well. And finally, 3-3, about to finish here for the Terran. This is going to be a pretty sizable window where Terran has 3-3 and Zerg is slow to get plus two melee attack and slow to get plus three armor. It's going to be like, what, like two minutes or something? Yeah, and look, I mean, if this was the strategy, we got to see, is it going to work now? It's kind of built up into this moment. Looks like he gets a deny there on that drone. But if not, I mean, if Zerg could play the waiting game, then this whole build really doesn't do anything. I mean, I, as far as I can tell, Solar is still growing on the map. He is getting to the point where he's going to run out of bases. The last base that's technically on his side of the map is in the top right. Um, we do have a lot of games that end in this matchup where if the Terran wins, it's because the Zerg just basically ran out of resources uh, and dries up and runs out of options where the Terran has maybe one, two resource nodes on the map that can soak up and, and eventually close it out. That might be the way this game goes, but First, we got to see Ken Ryung actually do something with what he's got so oh, far. What a mainly, what, what a widow mine shot right there on the left side. Now, Solar going to try and break in, but these Ultras getting absolutely shredded by the Marauder, Marauders in bio. Those ghosts, unfortunately, all the way stuck in the front are going to go down. Yeah, he does take that command center out. Unfortunately, did not yeah. lift that and get that somewhere safe. Uh, he's going to try to push in here a little bit further. I didn't realize this wasn't a planetary over uh, at the third base, just an orbital instead. But this is going to be a little bit of an issue here for Solar, I think, because up until this point, he's lost so many queens that he has basically no larvae. He has just one larva on the map right now, four queens in total. He's at 170 supply. Besides Ultras, there's nothing really supply efficient he can make out of those larvae. The injects are few and far between. So, Ryung, if he senses that he has the potential to get some damage done right now and starts moving across the map. Solar's going to have a really hard time repopulating, especially if he loses this hatchery as well. I mean, the larva are coming in so slowly right now for Solar. It's going to be a real struggle for him to reach max supply again. I mean, Rung, this is a window. It's hard, though. It is hard in a moment like this if you're the Terran to understand exactly the situation that Zerg is in. But we'll see. Bio once again coming in on the left side. If he gets another hatchery, that could be huge. You just watch these Marauders absolutely shred these Ultras. The upgrade advantage is huge here you for know, Ryung. Every up, uh, Ultras that's picked off here is a pretty big deal, right? A, a lot of times when you're going for this many Ultras, you want to have so many Lings and Ultras that you just overpower them in a fight. Uh, a little sloppy there by Ryung not picking up in time. So, I mean, for this, it's going to be... I don't know, it's, it's, it's a game where, like, I think you're right. It's a little shaky here for Solar. At the same time, I don't know that Ryung has the muscle to do much more damage. He's being able to punch out those two bases over and over. Um, yeah, things are quieting down a little bit. Yeah, especially with three more command centers getting thrown down. I suppose this is going to be one of those TBZs where no one really could get the game-ending damage done in the mid-game, and now Turin's going to hunker down and build a bunch of ghosts. <laughs> Okay, so there's a little bit of roaming over here. We got a drop on the far left side of the map. Looks like that's probably an angle for the main. No, excuse Ooh. me, it's actually gonna be a Widow Mine drop. Uh, it's not gonna be able to, to get pulled off there. He's gonna instead go into the main. I think there's no way that medevac gets out. It's gonna be too low on HP. Yeah, he's just gonna shuffle these Widow Mines wherever he can and try to get some damage done. But it doesn't seem like it's being paired with any kind of real push. I guess we got a small squad coming up here to the top right. Mm -hmm. um, 
But yeah, at this point in time, I'm wondering, is Terran going to actually shift back into just full-on turtle mode? Because it doesn't seem like we've had any kind of major uh, push here from the Terran. We've had sort of these little guerrilla attacks here and there. Yeah, there hasn't been that big push, but Rung's economy is really strong right now. He's a little bit behind on workers, but keep in mind, he has all those orbital commands, and well, this third base actually not very well defended. Snipes, though, coming down in the Vipers. That's going to take a lot of the oomph out of this army here for Solar. As Rung just able to quickly rotate in, and then you know, the game plan here for Young, if he's able to take some favorable trades, might just be to keep Solar on as few bases as possible, because as you pointed out earlier, Tasteless, it is hard for the Zerg to really start expanding beyond the bases that he has now, and even those bases on the left and the right side, you know, just two medevacs worth of bio. Yeah. If Solar is caught out of position, even with creep spread, it's tough to get there in time and actually defend. And I mean, that's exactly what Rung is going for right now, these three medevacs on the right side. Almost certainly should be able to take this hatchery out unless Solar is able to catch it. Now, he did get vision there, and yeah, he is going to pull the Corruptors. You know, it does seem like it could be possible for Zerg to take the bottom left. Maybe. Be really hard. I, I mean, guess, I guess what I'm trying to get at is each uh, corner, top right and bottom left, it's kind of hard to hold. Right. It's, it's almost like its own little location on the map where everything else is grouped together, at least expansion-wise. Like this space over here, Terran, yeah, easily takes that. Um, but that bottom left one, that, that's pretty far away from home. It is, but it's also really hard for the Zerg to get there eventually, you know? I mean, it, it's just a screen yeah, away from actually, planetary fortresses. Over down by that linear third. And are we going to have a bunch of broodlings morphed, or broodlords, excuse me, morphed over here? I saw that greater spire. Yeah, I think that eventually will happen. Just Solar needs to trade out some of these units to free up supply for that. And <laughs> he's going for that base taste because he doesn't want it. Another attack coming in here at the triangle third. Liberator is actually a little bit out of position. Not getting protected by the bio or by the missile turrets, really. So they are going to get taken out. But it's such a hard position here to breach for Solar. That base in the bottom left did get cleaned up by Rung as well. Some nukes are getting thrown in here. And you know, Rung right now, he did lose a couple of SCVs. I wouldn't really mind seeing Rung go even lower on army supply, however, or on worker supply, excuse me, given how many orbital commands he has. The SCVs, the way these corruptors, This is I one guess way to not. get rid of supply. I guess we're not going to go into Broodlords with those, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's he making more corruptors. to damage the buildings down there. He's right. making more corruptor. He's making what? 14 more corruptors. I think. What? These that was are... really weird, man. First game of the day, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Still getting warmed up a little bit here. Some of all the things I sides. thought would be made, when I saw the corruptors go and die like that, I'm like, well, clearly he doesn't need these. Well, I was thinking the same thing as you. It's like, well, yeah, Rude Lord just seems like the natural transition here to try and take well, advantage of some of We've seen it so many space. times before, right? So. Yeah, well, Solar does have the healthier bank here than Ryung. Okay, so a little small attack up here. Mm -hmm. Again, more supply uh, dumped out. He does deny that command center at the bottom left. I oh, feel like inevitably it is going to get taken by the Terran, though. I mean, Solar really doesn't have the map presence unless he's able to make some big play happen. Attack nuke. Oh, oh my Solar? god. Solar? Hello? Okay, no, he finds okay. it. <laughs> my goodness. Like, he's going to run all his stuff over there to get nuked. Are you going to get nuked again? <laughs> so, I don't think that the uh, the Terran's going to get broken here for a little bit. We're at the phase of the game where the resources are really starting to pile up. If you look at what Zerg has, uh, we're going to be at 4,000 gas real quick here with the bases that are available. Terran's at about 2, 2K. Um, sorry, 2K minerals, 2K gas is what I'm trying to say. Zerg right now at 4.3 to 3.2, but maxed out. So, like, you know, that's going to pile up pretty quickly here. A lot of times the way that Zergs can win games like this one is they throw everything they've got into the Terran and then completely remax in a second and throw that into the Terran. And we will even have games where there's, like, a third moment. They'll remax that again and throw that into the Terran, and that's usually how the Zerg is going to swing the end game. If the Terran's going to... Well, hold on a second. I'll get to that after this fight. We've got this command center... Uh, just completely wiped in and out. Solar escapes. But of course, there's more command centers here to boot for uh, Ryung. Yeah, Ryung playing a very low siege tank style right now. I guess because he's so fanned out on the map, it's hard to have enough army supply to really <laughs> cover all your bases here with siege tanks. But that does mean that pushes coming in from Solar, like that one, can just take down planetary fortresses. He's going to come in here again, get a nice round on this planetary. 
Yeah. Be able to take this one out too, but really the fence for Young hasn't been that solid. But oh, he's getting oh, on top of the oh. Broodlord's tasteless. Snipes coming down as soon as they morph in. That was four or five broods immediately taken out. Yeah, just killed off in the blink of an eye there. The Infestor's a little bit late. Looks like the Spores might have to shimmy forward a little bit further here if they're going to spot for anything like that. Meanwhile, um, I mean, Solar's just continuing to roam and do damage wherever he can. Looks like a uh, burrowed Zergling was killed under that command center. Yeah, Solar's done a really good job of just disrupting the mining here for Ryung. Ryung's been playing this so passively, but he hasn't really been able to anchor his position on any of these bases so far. I would love to see him throw down a couple more sensor towers to get a bit of a better read on what Solar's movement is going to be, because I feel like he's been caught out of position more times than not. And he's losing bases, he's getting his mining you know, idled by having to lift up these planetaries and orbital commands. Okay, so we got a lot of Broodlords sitting here. I don't know if he wants to push for them or if he's basically just keeping these Broodlords at the top center to basically defend. I think a lot of times we think of Broodlords as these units that push, but I guess you could just keep them back. Almost like we see these Liberators set up over here. If this whole game is going to come down to the bottom left base, which it feels like is more and more the case, I kind of like what Solar's doing. Yeah, it's been solid. And the Broodlords on the defense have been doing the job ever since that initial ghost Snipe just kind of pounced on them as soon as they morphed in because this little hit squad of Ultras, Lings, and Banelings has been doing fine work, just taking down planetaries, forcing idle time, delaying that third base, or not the third base, excuse me, the quarter base from getting it set up there for Young. And we're out, he is being cost efficient. I like that his army supply, or his worker supply, excuse me, I don't know why I'm so fumbled today, but his no, worker supply is all the way down at 57 SCVs. Given his orbital commands, that's going to mean his army is a lot more potent than before, and he's going to take these trades much more cost efficiently than it was for the past couple of minutes. And now with nukes coming in, this is almost pure ghost, but there really isn't very much on the ground to contest it here for Solar. It's a very low number of banelings. I don't see any investors. It's it's rare that you see just ghosts pushing forward like this in the yeah. TVZ. And it's <laughs> Zerg, I mean, just Zerg cowering in the corner of the map right now. Um, gotta be careful though. You do not want to waste any ghosts. He's sniping banelings. <laughs> How often do you see this? Yeah. Meanwhile, we've got this crazy wave of Broodlords moving on the map. I don't know if I've ever I seen just 15 ghosts walk into a base and kill the ground army and drop like two nukes. That was bizarre. But I think there's like 18 Broodlords right now. Yeah, he's making two more, more being made. And um, I wish we could just check all the minerals here at the Terrence base and the Zerg's base right now, because Zerg is going to start to dry up. You know, there isn't really a lot of anti-air here for Whoa. Solar, all right, coming in. Oh my god, that EMP gets almost every single Infestor. Snipes coming in. The Liberators with a... <laughs> that's so much damage. Armor treading missile on the Broodlords and the Liberators. There's no anti-air. Dude. They just completely mop up. It's like watching a StarCraft 1 game with Valkyries, man. That's it's insane. Crazy. He just wiped everything <laughs> out. Is this game over now? I, mean, I think it has so to Solar's be. Solar's at like 150 minerals and 400 gas. What an insane fight. Dude. What an ending. By the way, I... I mean, maybe they had it on the unit counter, but I was so busy looking at the Broodlords, I didn't appreciate how many Vikings were actually here. That was the perfect play there from Ryung. And they're, he's landing mules to repair the planetary. I love it here for Ryung. I mean, Solar is down at 100 supply. Ryung has a 6K resource bank. Yeah, this game should be done. I can't believe it. I feel like Solar, like the clear favorite of this group, is going to go what? down uh, at least in one game here wow. to Ryung. Ryung coming out with a really interesting build. It was... Uh, Three Reapers, three Command Centers, two Ebays into late game. And I got to say, the armor shredding, the late game armor shredding Dude. missiles from the Ravens. Yeah. Paired with that was like a dozen Liberators on clumped broods is some of the finest, finest anti-air I've seen from a Terra. That was so that awesome. Was crazy, dude. Cool game by Ryung. That was fun. Yeah, that was a, that that was was a unique really, one. Now, look, he <laughs> just needs to have one more tricky build, something unexpected and he could take this game. Wow. Wow. I mean, this was kind of the whole funny thing about today, right? Uh, that, you know, Solar picks Ryung, their teammates, but obviously Solar views Ryung as probably the weakest player that he could go up against. And here we are right now, Solar is facing the possibility of going down to the loser's match here in this group. Ryung looks really impressive there in game number one. I wonder if he's going to go for the same kind of greedy opening here, though, in game two, because I feel like if Solar is keyed in, that Ryung is going to be taking these risks. He's one of those Zergs that is not afraid to get aggressive. He can no, all in you, he can just do Ravager pressure, he can throw you off your game.
And let's keep in mind, Ryung, he got into late game going with the greeniest possible build. It was double engineering bay into three orbital. And even behind that, it didn't culminate in a push. He threw down more command centers. He got all the way up into 3-3 three, three before right. he really amped up the aggression on the flanks. I don't know if we're going to see the same build from Young. I imagine Solar is going to be a lot more aggressive here in game number two. I don't think he wants to face Young in the late game after <laughs> how disastrous that last fight was in game number one. But let's see what happens, man. I'm excited. Yeah, it's cool to see Young win in a long game, too. Yeah. That was where I was 100% certain Solar would never lose it against Young. So this is already a really exciting series. We're ready to go now into game number two. Let's see if the upset continues on or if our GSL champion can fight back and win. Okay, we've got Solar in the bottom left, Ryung in the top right. Really? Ryung leading this one 1-0. One -oh. Man, I am like tripping over my words today. I don't know. Maybe it's I didn't get enough sleep last night. <laughs> You're good, man. Oh, he's got some support here for Solar. He needs it now more than ever. Yeah, absolutely. But some Ryung fans. Sweden fan Sweden club. Sweden fan club. Go, hero. Um, Love it. That's a crazy game. You know, we were talking earlier, like, this is probably going to be a pretty long um evening the games well game one definitely proved us right on that i think solar versus rung of all the matches today absolutely has the potential to go the latest here versus hero those are both two gamers that absolutely will go to your throat <laughs> at the first opportunity but Ryung, he is not afraid to go into the late game even against players of the caliber of solar who's coming off yeah. one of his best years of his career the reigning gsl champion and this is something that is really impressive for me with Ryung, and it's something he's always been good at, because you see players like Nightmare, and I love Nightmare a lot, but I, I feel like he doesn't have the full confidence in the late game okay. compared to a player like Ryung. Like, he, he will go there occasionally, but you compare that to somebody of the top, top level, like, like a Maru or a Ryung that is not afraid just to hunker down and defend and play that pure macro game. I feel like that's something that a lot of mid-range players kind of lack. But Ryung sure. has really stood ahead above the crowd in that regard for at least the class that he's in. As somebody yeah. that hasn't made a lot of round of eights recently, yeah. hasn't made very many quarterfinals, but is consistently qualifying for GSL. The fact that he is so confident in his game that he's like, you know what, I, I actually can go and play 200 and 200 versus the reigning champion. I, that's just so impressive to me from even a mentality standpoint because I think a lot of lesser players, myself oh. included, if I was trying to compete. Did you see that dodge? Yeah. <laughs> just barely gets out of there. Vision Imba, man. Those yeah. Oblors, they can see far. Oh, I think he's going to find it, but it should be able to get over this little square thing. I think Wait. it can't be seen from there. I think it can with a high ground vision. Oh, for some reason I thought that was like yeah. counted as higher ground. Oh, that's annoying then. Okay, so the Oblors is going to be taking some damage here. The thing is for Young, though, is you really want to gamble about Sending those two Marines into the middle and risking like four lings coming in and cleaning them up. And also you have to deal with this back at home. So the Overlord will survive, but yeah, from Ryung, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him again go for a bit more of a passive game. Obviously this isn't, this isn't three Reaper into double engineering bay into three third command center. Right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a little bit more aggressive than that. It's a relatively fast factory, although we do have that third CC coming down. But I, I think he's probably going to try and play oh. a similar kind of game. And so are it's, we going to go mech? Yeah, yeah, this is two factory. Oh, wow. I had to do a double take there when I saw that. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is a very different approach. We talked about the kind of weird mind games that may be at play. By the way, another bad sign here for Soul. He did lose that Overlord. You know, these builds are so fine-tuned. It is actually really frustrating and, and uh, disruptive to have one of those, uh, you know, supply groups annihilated and, and, and throws your build off here. So he's going for factories. Is he going to try to do um, some kind of timing or is this going to be more of a turtled out game, I wonder? I'm imagining something like a battle mech opening into just straight up yeah. mech. Because Maybe Hellion the... Cyclone into like turtled right. out, teched out, um, tanks and everything else. Yeah, that's what I would think. I don't think I ever see Ryungo mech. Just thinking back to it, I feel like I don't cast games of him mecking very often. He's very much like a, a kind of bio Terran. 
I remember back when I was at the Axiom house. I was living there with Young for a while, and this is like, God, I feel like it was like a decade ago. It might actually be it a decade. It probably literally was a decade ago. It might actually be a decade ago. He used to go mech quite often back then, at least on the ladder. I'm not too sure about his tournament games because back then I was just a Protoss Pro gamer. I wouldn't watch like, I wouldn't watch TVZ. I wouldn't watch TVTs. That's so funny because I know exactly what you're talking about. When I was doing StarCraft 1, I like mm -hmm. only watched the Protoss games. I'm like, I do not care about the other matchups. Yeah. I need to only soak up what matters to me in improving my game. Well, it's different when you're like a player versus when you're a caster mm -hmm. or when you're a viewer of tournaments, right? But he, he used to go mech. Quite a fair bit back then. I'm not sure about recently, but this is going to be, yeah, straight up battle mech. Five Cyclones in production right now, and this might even catch Solar off guard. I don't think he really has any idea. Now, seeing these extra two Cyclones and only one Marie in the front might be a so, tell. Or two Hellions, excuse me, but he hasn't seen any Cyclones just yet. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think this is uh, a really well-masked strategy. You just see enough of the Hellions, and what's going to happen is he's going to have sustain because the uh, armory is going to come down here. Gonna have Hellbats too. And he's pulling so many Cyclones right now. And, and I don't think Solar has any idea exactly how many are coming his way. He might have an inkling that this is going to be Battle Mech. Keep in mind the number of Hellions that you're seeing roam around the map is the exact amount that would come out of one factory. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing that tells you that it's Mech. So you might be expecting like drops or bio, and instead it's gonna be the Snap. This is gonna work. It's gonna have to really do damage very quickly and snowball the game. Yeah, there's very little armies to play on the map right now here for Solar. Just 38, 10. Oh, I think he's playing a little bit too scared here. Yeah, eight queens, 10 lings, and less than a dozen roaches. So Solar immediately trying to throw in some more units. I feel like Ryung should be trying to get some chip Dude, damage. Dude, I feel like he needs to be going right for now. more than this right now. This just feels like you had the timing and now you're going to sit on his creep for a little bit. Yeah, maybe a little bit timid there. Well, now he's looking at Command Center, so never mind. Hmm. So clearly this one, I guess it, he made it look at least to Solar like it was a timing as well. But if you're going to throw down a command center, then you're intent on having a much longer game. So I don't know. I felt like it almost would have been better to just actually try to get in and get the damage done. But here maybe, we are. Yeah, maybe he doesn't have a, an exact read on when. Well, even if it's Roach Speed completes, I feel like you're not going to take too unfavorable a fight with Battle Mech like this. But I guess Rung is just confident to try and you know, multitask Solar a little bit here with Cyclones and Hellions. I mean, Battle Mech like this. Is so mobile, especially if Ryung decides that he wants to mine out those minerals right. over by the third base so that he can open up that path because he can kind of play keep away just attacking this base over here at the 9 o'clock position, going down to the 7 o'clock position, and attacking that hatchery later on. There's a lot of opportunity here with Battle Mech to get something done, and it's one of those compositions that it's really hard as the Zerg player to actually engage with and take a favorable trade unless you get a complete surround or catch the Terran sleeping with their mech units just kind of idling off creep, right? So, I mean, it's obviously going to have to be a long game because Terran's not going to commit to anything. Zerg was forced to stay back and defend and, and turtle up. Um, but this is going to be an insane game if it's going to be a long one. This map is huge. Um, there's a lot of bases that are kind of hard to get to for the Terran if they're going to stay on anything that's not a mobile mech. And you kind of don't go into the end game to just a bunch of Cyclones running around. You know, you start to get tanks and, and stuff like that. So, I don't know. I feel like this should be a more manageable game from Solar. What do you think? I'm wondering whether Young is going to take a fifth command center or if he's just going to sit on these four CCs. Because one thing about playing mech like this is you really need gas if you want to max out. That's why right. he immediately doubled down on the refineries at that fourth base. But it wouldn't surprise me if he just tried to hit some really solid timing with a ton of siege tanks, a ton of cyclones. I mean, he has three more factories in production right now. And basically just do a four base, I, mean, I don't want to call it an all-in, but a very committed yeah. attack. Because also you look at the architecture of this map, yes, it is very big, but it's kind of a straight shot from your third and your fourth base through the center of the map into the heart of the Zerg's base, right? I mean, you see up some tanks there, you get a good position with Cyclones, you get some Thors out for Ants here, maybe even mix in a couple of Ghosts, although we'll see if Ryung decides to go that way. You can anchor down a position that is really hard for the Zerg to breach, and really problematic because it's kind of in the middle of all of their hatcheries, all of their expansions. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's actually a good point. I mean, you could basically try to have like this death squad that moves out and you try to flatten them. I feel like it's going to be tough to pull off though. You know, when, when you get a mass tanks, which which is you know an inevitability if you start to really go into deep late game mech, you are giving up mobility. So it would seem to me like Zerg could also just rely on counterattacks. If they take out just one of your bases, it's going to be big. Here comes that push, by the way. So let's see how this actually goes. 
I feel like Ryung is playing a very, very different set of games than what I'm used to seeing, which is kind of exciting when you see a player evolve this much. The question is, is it a gimmick or is it like, you know, going to be something we can really take a lot from and, you know, learn from here? He is going to start to advance on this. The thing is, this style of play on this map, I feel like all the bases are so far from where the Terran needs to get, right? Yeah. I feel I, like this would have been better on the previous map. I feel like you need to get to this position where Solar is planting his army right now. You want to get between that third base of the triangle and the gold base. You want to get right here on screen because from there you can kind of go anywhere with the Cyclones, right? You can take down that base at the triangle third. You can go down and kill the gold base. You can take down the base at the 7 o'clock position if you hold that spot. But instead, Ryung looks like he's going to just slowly inch his way over here to the left side. And look at the map. He actually has a really wide arc of, I think, Siege Tank's there right in the center. Very unique style of almost pure Siege Tank Cyclone that we're seeing right now. It's 27 Cyclones and 10 Siege Tanks. I guess the question is going to be, how many bases are going to be denied here from Zerg? Because you can kind of play keep away. I mean, the Cyclones and the Hellions are pretty mobile, right? But, mm -hmm. like, you can do moves like this. Oh. Or not. Okay, yeah, he's going to come in there. A couple of Siege Tanks right here, but... Like, how can I take this base out with as little as possible? Oh, Siege Tanks focus firing the Banelings there. Might take enough of the damage away that they cannot get the CC. And, yeah, they're going to have to go for the SCV. So, pretty good trade right there for Young, all things yeah, considered. Yeah, kind of sloppy there um, from Solar, to be honest. We had, I think it was five Broodlords we saw a second ago. Um, Morphine. We've got the gold base being taken here. I can't imagine this is going to stay up for much longer. Broods are coming out, but by the way, Rung has already been producing Vikings for a while now, three at a time, and I guess he only has two on the field. I thought that number might be two, or might be five instead, so a little bit slow on the production, but he did have this really on his map, and so these Vikings, all of them, they get abducted in the Queens. These yeah. two, poor two Vikings. So every time you see a tank die, it's huge. Think of how much gas that costs. And uh, obviously the Broodlords could just come through here and pick this off pretty easy. In fact, Ryung kind of being sloppy. Some of these tanks just left uh, to get wiped by the Broodlings here. We've got a push coming in. Again, I just don't, I'm trying to wrap my head around how could Ryung win this game, right? I mean, he's basically mm. not made a dent on any base. Again, going back to the theme we were talking about earlier, like they are practice partners. Sometimes you gotta try weird experimental stuff to beat your opponent. I feel like we're seeing him try that, and this is just conceptually not a good approach to the map, to the player, uh, to the game. I mean, Solar right now is pushing this third base with a bank of 8K resources. Now, Rung is going to be able to clean up these Broodlords at last with the Vikings, but Solar is sitting on 42 Larva. This hatchery eventually will get taken out by the Cyclones, I believe. And, and losing these broods, it doesn't really matter that much for Solar. He can trade this army away and then make another army and completely trade that and then still rematch to go kill Ryung across the map. I mean, the economic lead, unless Ryung can really snowball the fight with these Cyclones and get on top of production, it's going to be hard for Solar, right? or hard for Ryung, I think. We'll see, okay. though. Yeah, we'll see what he can do with this attack over here. This is kind of a funny-looking, <laughs> very mobile mech army. Is this going to be a bit of a seesaw? Uh, and who's actually taking this game. We see him pushing across the map. Now, no tanks, so you don't have that, like, bulk damage, but you do have the mobility. Actually, Solar maxing on a lot of lings right now. Yeah. So the Larva count is going quite low. He's coming in for the engagement, getting these Cyclones here on the left side. Bailey's connecting on the Cyclones in the middle, getting a lot of damage done. This push from Young actually getting a lot more than I thought it could, but still the remax from Solar. And he played it a little bit tight right there with a low Larva count, but is able to breach that position. I mean, that was kind of wild. It seems like everything goes back to even here as far as supplies go. But you see it was potential. a lot of links, though. A lot of lar larva dumped into those links. And then the question is, can Terran kind of uh, re uh, come back with with a, a strong comp? And maybe Zerg doesn't have you know the momentum uh, due to the lack of larva to, the, to replace that. Yeah, but with a fight like that, you can really see the potential of the composition that Ryung is trying to run with. And it, it kind of makes me sad that we didn't see this culminate in a push off of something like four bases because that was a pretty impressive fight. It went better for Young than I was expecting it to for the beginning, even though Solar was eventually able to clean it up. And as it is right now, that trade was cost efficient enough for the Terran that Solar, that bank isn't quite so strong anymore. I and mean, he's maxing on a very expensive army. He's making more Vipers, a lot of Banelings, a lot of Ravagers. These are all very supply intensive units in terms of their cost. So only 3K resources in the bank. So a lot of gas banks for Solar which yeah. means we really need to see the Terran keep the gas units alive here. 
kind of a weird way to think about it, but I think it is, is valid here, especially if you're talking about mech, right? I mean, the stuff that's not gas intensive is pretty flimsy uh, as far as these big fights go. Solar, you know, he's not getting denied bases. There's still plenty of bases for him to take on the map. I think Terran has maybe one more base sort of in the center right that's going to be, in fact, he's taking it right now. But the other bases are pretty far away from home. They're tough for Terran to, to take it and hold. You know, mech requires a lot of um, physical micromanagement to set up and defend. It's it's a little a lot less fluid than, like, you know, bio. I'm starting to like this position a little bit more for Young, though. I feel like he's done a really good job of stabilizing back at home after losing so many siege tanks in the middle. And getting that third base kind of taken apart by the Broodlord timing attack that came through earlier. Since then, Solar really hasn't been able to get very much done with this much more low-tech composition that he's been running. And so Ryung really hasn't taken that much damage. And if he's able to get this gold base up with another gas... He's getting armor here, too, so... Um, oh, hold on a second. He's going to be a hit once again. And it's going to be one of these Terran games where it's like, just figure out which side, uh, you know, the, the uh, Zerg is really not defending and hit over there. Uh, he's going to be hitting this hatchery to take out a couple of drones. There's not going to be enough to take this base out. Um, but he's basically causing a couple little fires here and there that uh, Ryung, or sorry, Solar has to put out. This is, again, this map just feels a lot bigger than our previous map as far as the way the bases are laid out. I'm getting really interested in the two top left bases and this uh, far lower right base as well. Um, there are more bases given to the Terran as the game goes on because Terran expand later. So Zerg can use up their side of the map more often. Um, but the question is, can Terran reach into those corners and protect it? You know, the more I'm seeing this style here on this map for Ryung, the, the more I like it as a selection because he's only really not taking that top left base with a high yield Vespian gas, but he's focusing instead down on the bottom right quadrant, which is where most of the minerals are. And if he's able to actually take all of those expansions down to the bottom right, then suddenly it's a really good staging grounds to attack into solar. As, so we're going to come through here again. The Vikings just shredding these Vipers. A couple of ducks and blinding clouds do come down as Solar is going to get pushed back <laughs> yet again. He does take that command center out. Now, Zerg has uh, got that lower right base. I think that the uh, sensor tower is just barely not over that hatchery. I can't yeah, tell. Yeah, I believe you're right. <laughs> yeah, I it's think, barely out of yeah, range. I think he so he just barely doesn't know that that's there. Um, I'm sure Terran will find out quickly. But if he doesn't, you know, Zerg can soak up those resources, and that's going to be pretty big. I love these late game Ravens we're seeing out of Ryung, by the way. Very few Terran players actually do this, mixing in a Raven with their composition. I love in this. Game one. He's doing it again in game two. Armor shredding missile come down. It pairs so well here with the Cyclones. And Solar, he's really just kind of playing a Roachling Ravager composition and not getting the best trades because of it. And that scares me. He is doing a good job of keeping Ryung's bank low because he is trading units out and his economy is a little bit better with his better, better mineral saturation. But my fear is if Solar isn't able to really break Ryung's position at all, eventually Ryung is just going to have the more cost-efficient fights. And if this goes to a split map scenario, it's cost efficiency that kind of determines who is going to be winning the game. Yeah, I mean, this is really what the matchup is like uh, in, when it comes to the late game here. So we got another attack in over here. Everything backs off. Meanwhile, Lings and Bane's going to come down. So this, this hatchery is just probably going to get killed. I, I can't imagine, especially when the Cyclones are this close to the tanks, there's any real way for melee units to try to engage this and shut this down. And the composition that Ryung has worked his way to is about as good as it gets. It, it is Ghost Mech, and it doesn't matter if you open up with Bio. Ghost Mech is kind of the ideal, eventually. Right. It's just so supply efficient. It's, it's the best army composition in the game, in my opinion, especially in a matchup like this one, TBZ. And that means that Ryung, now that he's maxed with 132 army supply of Ghost Mech, unless he's caught woefully out of position, which this base right here is a little bit exposed, the Ghost and the Cyclones are going to work their way back in. Yeah, he can come back in. And remember, he's got enough command centers, so he can just swap in a new one. Yeah. The question is going to be, you know, does Zerg ever do the critical damage to to cripple the Terran where he can't reclaim these exterior bases? Because as far as I can tell, this is not a game where we're going to have Terran pushing across the map and killing Zerg here. No, not anymore. This doesn't look like this is going to be uh, mech style mixed in with the way that we've seen Maro beat so many great Zergs in the past, which is to just sit back. Um, and kind of let the Zerg burn through the resources, and then you're left over with the few bases remaining, sometimes even just one. 
I'm curious how many minerals are actually left on these bases in the bottom right for Solar. Now, he has been able to expand at the top left to take that high yield gas, so this gas has become really healthy right now as he once again attacks in on this base. Just <laughs> the new command center gets planted down and immediately gets unseated. But the thing is, the army that Solar has on the ground doesn't really stand too much of a chance in a straight up fight. Right. But because Solar's economy is so much better, because he has all these bases, all this very efficient mining happening, he is able to kind of catch Ryung out of position consistently and take these trades. And so Ryung right now actually really struggling for minerals. We actually had 18 uh, SCVs killed off. And I, he's starting to rebuild them, but I'm, I'm hoping he's going to get that number high enough because you do need a lot of SCVs in this phase of the game, draining all these resource nodes here. Another big attack comes in. Doesn't look like he quite has enough to take that planetary out. No, but Solar is doing a really good job of just keeping Ryung contained. I think he knows that his army composition doesn't necessarily beat Ryung's right now, but it's much more mobile, and he can just kind of take them back and macro about as efficiently as possible. I mean, the mineral saturation with these 76 workers has to be ideal here for Solar, especially with the high yield gas and the gold base still with resources left, and he doesn't have to be super supply efficient in fights like this one, although coming in with the Banelings, he was able to get a connection on the Ghost, which a couple of them do go down. Oh, man. That was actually insane, dude. That was such an overextension. Yeah. I said that maybe uh, Solar, you know, the, 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 sorry. What I said was uh, Terran probably can never actually attack on this side of the map. Well, when that happens, you can. Now we've got Ryung. He's going to be able to get those resources over there in the bottom right. We do have a base being taken to the top left over here on the Terran side of the map. Can he actually come in here and take this hatchery out? He's on a timer, though, because the Remax is coming here for Solar, and Ryung just is really struggling to replace the army that he's got. But here's the thing. Uh, uh, oh, actually, no, yeah, Solar has a lot in the bank. For a second, I yeah. swapped the minerals. I was like, no, he doesn't have any money. But no, that's actually <laughs> Ryung. He's going to push it again. A lot of tanks back here. It's tough to get into that angle. That little bridge back there really gives a lot of cover. Solar's vials have been really on point this game, by the way. He's taking down ghosts. He's taking down siege tanks, killing Vikings. Really good control with those vials, and he's going to come in. Those siege tanks are clumped, so he's able to take them both down two at a time with those vials. And you know, Ryung, he finally is starting to mine from that bottom right base, and he really needs it because this is basically his whole mineral economy yeah. right now. I feel like Ryung is almost dead. I mean, he has such a powerful army composition, although it has gotten thinned out quite a bit by these incessant counterattacks. Well, just look at his legs coming in here. I mean, yeah, any tank he takes out, it's it's devastating. Now he's going to come in here and hit this base. He turned that into a planetary, so he can't. There's no way to save it now. He just has to try to get out as much damage as possible. We're seeing uh, Solar now come in and close out on basically the last viable base that Ryung has. That's the gold base. He can't take that expansion over there. Yeah, I know Ryung right now is dropping a ton of mules on yeah. that 3 o'clock base, and it's going to mine out very quickly. And once that happens, oh, I think oh, our server almost gave us a shot of it. I saw the mouse cursor hovering over that yeah. 3 o'clock. I want to see those minerals so bad. But Ryung is really, really struggling for minerals right now. He needs to secure a base. That is kind of his win condition because Solar, his bank is running out. Ryung has been very supply efficient. He's been very cost efficient over the course of these fights. Solar has spent a lot of money trying to keep Ryung from taking, you know, one more base because he knows that if he can starve the Terra and that is the win condition. You see right there, it's about, what, 10k minerals more efficient here for Ryung? One or 2k more gas efficient than solar. And so Ryung just really needs to try and hold on. And I kind of like him almost forfeiting this base over here because there aren't too many minerals left in the high yield. And just try to get back to max. I, I think you try to repopulate the space over down here in the bottom right, drop a ton of mules down on that, and then eventually work your way towards denying the bases in the top left. But for right now, Ryung just really needs to reach a maxed army supply. And he's almost there again. And if Solar goes for another overextension like the previous one that really ate into his bank, it could be problematic. But here we go again, now, Faceless. If this attack doesn't work, Ryung could be back in this game for a little bit. But if this attack does succeed, it's probably going to be the very end here. There's just so much coming in. There's nothing to cover these tanks. Um, nice arc of tanks actually, here on the high ground, You know though. what? I thought he was going to get some more corrosive vials down there, and then it didn't happen. I was ready for, oh, like, a big... What? We didn't even catch this Wait. in the top left. The Cyclones just took down a high-yield gas base, and the drones are evacuating the other one. It was like I thought Zerk was about to have that, and suddenly he failed that attack, and now we have all these workers getting killed off up here. It's 46 workers to 49. That number's going to get even a little bit lower here. Solar might have overextended a little bit again. 
30 workers in total going down. Wait Those Hellions got so much Dude, damage done. he has no minerals. He has no minerals. This is really the only Wait. base mining, and it's 18 out of 8. Wait. <laughs> is Rion going to upset what? Solar? He was on death's door, basically. This is like a, a cheesy movie. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a real game, guys. This is like WWE. This is wild. I mean, the cost efficiency the, the for drama, Rion. The story, I, I can't believe it. And he, it's basically I think he was so confident he was going to wipe that, and then it backfired, and then I, we weren't looking, the Observer wasn't looking, and it doesn't look like Solar was watching the top left side of the map, and all the drones got wiped. I think Solar was looking at that fight the same way that we were, where there weren't a lot of siege tanks immediately in the vicinity of the command center. Yeah. And so he just tears down that position, and then he doesn't stop, and he keeps going up. And there were like six more plus three siege tanks on the high ground in this beautiful defensive arc there for Young. And Solar just did not pull back fast enough. And now it's Rung basically on, what, what is this, like pure Hellbat Cyclone? I guess there are seven tanks mixed in with this, but 20 Cyclones in total. And Solar is so starved for resources right now. So he's got the bottom right, which I think we're about to see attacked. And he there, has resaturated the top left. There's plenty of, of workers, um, sorry, there are plenty of resources, what I'm trying to say, available on the Terran side of the map. Like we're 25 minutes into the game, Zerg has that base up there. No one's taking that. Such a chaotic game. Even the high yield Vespian gas only has one drone in it right now. Oh, it does. I didn't I guess notice that. Solar isn't really starved for gas right now. It's yeah, really it's minerals. True. That is the bottleneck. But okay, gets that uh, one drone. The aliens are now going to have to just kind of commit into here. He's going to go for workers again. Only gets three. Yeah, I don't think Solar mines too much because at 52 drones. I mean, with his current economy with, with the minerals that he has he just runs about as good as it gets <laughs> in terms of your mining efficiency he will make a couple more and once again attack this top base but really it's the bottom right base here for young that is just carrying his economy right now oh and he <laughs> scans it sees <laughs> it sick. okay um i mean you, that's somebody that uh -oh. has practiced with solar yeah. a bunch. Yeah, oh, just yeah, like, i, I know say. you're hiding an investor yeah. here that's where you pause the game and accuse them of hacking <laughs> um, so he comes in here and wipes this out and just runs right back out. He killed 11 drones. Oh, you know, God, a couple Hellbats on that bridge there can cover those um, yeah. Cyclones pretty easily. So what, what we're seeing Ryung do, you might be, like, wondering, why isn't he, you know, oh, trying? Oh, no. Oh, my God. Solar's having a very bad day. <laughs> the green cast is almost sound depressed. Yeah, they all, yeah. Hearing them cast this right now. <laughs> it's painful. Um. I mean, Solar, it felt like he almost had this. He was so close to breaking Rung. Yeah, yeah. Rung was struggling for well, what felt like almost five or ten minutes to take another base and actually so secure it. This base is almost gone anyways. It's yeah. going to be killed off, but it's almost it, it's almost better to long distance mine. I don't know the exact amount of the minerals, but I think you guys all know what I'm saying. Um, the top left is the only viable expansion that Zerg has, which makes it easy to just kind of go in there and hit. But the other thing to note, mm. the way that Ryung's playing, he's really slowing down. He knows that the Zerg is going to inevitably run out, so all he has to do is kind of be really careful and tiptoe around the map and take fights that he's going to win. He has two choices. He can try to push in to that base at the um, upper left, or he can just let it run out. Scan sees the Brewlords, by the way. Rung already has vi five Vikings out, and he's just going to be pumping all that gas into more. This game is insane. Yeah, I, for I thought now, this was going to be a forgettable series. Like no, I thought, you know, okay, Solar's going to kill Young, and that's too bad for oh, him. Oh, the high yield Vespian gas is out. The gas income right now for Solar is 300 a minute. He's, he's scrambling, <laughs> man. He's taking another gas. He probably just realized he hasn't been mining from that for a minute. Well, it's one of these games where there's so much that, that has happened. As it slows down, you can go back and be like, oh, my God, I didn't take that gas. This is very scary now for Solar, unless he's able to take a... So, Solid fight here against Ryung, which is hard against this 3-3 mech composition. Well, he could just start to make planetaries to protect the orbital, too, at the bottom right. That's like, you could true. actually make, like, five planetaries down there. It's like... But I feel like the wind condition for Ryung isn't even defending the bottom right anymore. It's just no, preventing Solar from taking that top but left base. And the I, thing is, you can siege that from the high ground base that Terran yeah, has. Yeah. No, I think, actually, Ryung almost has this. I can't believe how many different ways I've described this game, because that's how many different situations we've been in, you know? Like, this is wild. He's going to come in here. He's going for the Broodlords. Oh, the oh! Snipes are coming in. The Vikings as well. The Broodlords are getting mopped up. Oh, the Viper's even getting move commanded in. I think what? Solar just F2'd this. 
I mean, the Parasitic Bomb is huge, but the Sea Chink's getting so much damage down the road, Travager, and then the Fungal, solid there on the front line, but the back line for Young might be a little bit too strong. Dude, this is it, man. He's I coming in he's now. I think he's done it, Tasteless Dude, GG. upset of the season. I can't believe this. I cannot believe this. Oh, that is crazy. Yeah, Solar does not look happy with that one, man. No, this is, well, this is really embarrassing, man. Imagine picking your teammate here at yeah. the round of 16. You must have tremendous confidence for the practice games. And then Ryung wins 2-0. I mean, this is one of the GSLs of upsets. I'm thinking back to the previous GSL where Maur got knocked out in the first group stage. The first player out, I think, of Group A in that season yeah. was Maru. And now here, first season of 2024, we have Dark get knocked out in the group stage. And now Solar, the reigning champ, is down to the losers match against yeah. Ryung in yeah. the group of death. This is crazy. This is insane, man. What a day. I can't believe it. Um, like, who else is this group? Hero and Cure are going to be up next. This is wild, man. I can barely process it. Guys, stay tuned. We will be right back.